Hi, Justyna and Kuba. We are a couple from Poland who travels around Europe in search of traces of our prehistory and inspiring places. And everything we find, we share with you in our videos. Today we are taking you to northern Spain. This is the album we bought at the box office selling tickets to the El Castillo cave in Cantabria, Spain. Monte Castillo, La Montaña Sagrada, that is Mount Castillo, the holy mountain. Yes, this mountain is like cheese with holes made by cave interiors with Paleolithic art. Many of them can be visited with a guide. Note that you can see originals here, not replicas. One of these original caves is El Castillo. In my opinion, it is as impressive as Altamira, but El Castillo can be visited. The original Altamira, not only a replica. In El Castillo, we were with Jardet, an Irish traveler who lives in Australia. It was very spontaneous. We met yesterday at the Altamira replica and today we are here. It is not allowed to take pictures in the cave, so we can only show you frames taken in phenomenal Museo de Prehistoria y Arqueología in Santander and some pictures from the mentioned album. El Castillo has been used by people for at least 150,000 years. There are the oldest excavation levels in Cantabria. But the paintings are dated at least 41,000 years ago, although the cave was used until the Bronze Age and is still used. The most interesting are the paintings created in Paleolithic. Among the diverse kinds of depictions, signs are more frequent than animal figures. Among the animals, bisons predominate. At least one is similar to the bisons from Altamira, but many are much older. From Magdalenian times comes also this beautiful baton, of course found in El Castillo. This artifact is decorated with a stag engraved with deep lines. Inside the cave there are many handprints, always striking for me. Here they are at least from 37,000 years ago. You can stand in front of human handprints from almost 40,000 years ago. Of course you can't touch them, but it's still like shaking hands for tens of millennia. The last Neanderthals were still walking around Europe. Signs and symbols, what can they mean? And this, a bison has been painted to fit the rough surface of a stalagmite. The artist noticed the back, tail and hind leg in the shape of the rock. Yes, the animal is in the vertical position. Mental imaginary or shamanism? Maybe a mythical ancestor? Something else? There is a theory, for example, described by David Lewis Williams from Witwatersrand University in South Africa. This theory says that the walls of the cave are a membrane between our world and the transcendent world. And the shapes appearing on the walls of the cave are a feature of this membrane. The situation between the worlds. Ok, I finish for now. You have me talking about caves on a daily basis. Meet someone special, traveler Jordet, with whom we were in El Castillo. Jordet is a super nice, joyful person. She is a living icon of the fact that you can follow your travel passion boldly and independently. I say this as a woman because sometimes women are afraid of it. Jordet, you are an inspiration to me and I'm very happy you gave us your book. So, we're sitting next to El Castillo cave. Another cave, another beautiful cave with Paleolithic uh, paintings. And we, <laughs> now we with the 
our friend from Australia, from I from Ireland and Australia. Hello, everybody. <laughs> a lady met at just uh, met at uh, met, met yesterday <laughs> at uh, Altamira uh, at replica of Altamira cave, <laughs> and it is always uh, the chance we when traveling to meet someone, someone interesting. <laughs> I feel the same. Uh, I was wondering, I travel on my own and uh, I just um, was visiting Altamira and I asked one question of uh, Jakub, Jakub. Uh, Jakub here <laughs> and here we are the next day. They invite me to visit El Castillo with them. I don't have a car and I am always traveling, but this is what I love about traveling, where you meet strangers and they become friends and you have one idea for tomorrow and suddenly you are somewhere different. <laughs> <laughs> and you only travel, you always write a book about that. Yes. Um, My name is Gerdet Rooney and this is my book of travel stories. I wrote it during Covid and the name is Womadic Wanders. I am a woman no man, no bad, mm -hmm. and uh, stories of a compulsive traveler. Mm -hmm. I have been traveling <laughs> Since I am 17 and uh -huh. I will share a secret, I am now 68. <laughs> so this is my 50th year of travel uh -huh. when you exclude no travel in Australia. It was like a prison during COVID. And I am very lucky. Uh, Tony Wheeler uh -huh. is the uh, founder of Lonely uh -huh. Planet Guides. So he liked my stories uh -huh. and wrote uh -huh. it. And Beautiful. It, and one of my hobbies, like these two guys, mm -hmm. is ancient rock art. Mm -hmm. And yes. there are two stories in my book. One in Libya, where in the Sahara, uh -huh. it used to be savannah. And the famous paintings of the Mesak are the big cats fighting. And there is another story uh, where I was trapped in Somaliland. Uh, Algeish uh, is another uh, rock art site and here we have the bison. In, in Somaliland they have very strange cows, very different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are some photos inside. But uh, I am really pleased. I I met uh, Jakub and yes, Justina <laughs> because today we visited an uh, authentic cave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the replica and you feel it, unlike Lascaux, mm -hmm. it wasn't such a good replica. Mm -hmm. It felt very fake. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you could not take photos. The cave was very deep and um, I was amazed. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Especially mm -hmm. by, mm -hmm. by such bison. Uh -huh. It was special, such bison. Bi bison like a half man, half bison in vertical position. And why, why shaman? Mm -hmm. Because in every European cave that we visited, the guides said they were sanctuaries. Our guide in El Castillo used shamanic theories, I think. According to them, this bison may have been a shaman in a costume or a shaman undergoing mystical transformation into a bison. Bisons are a special animal in we, every we think about prehistory. Yeah. Even today with the Hindu culture, the uh -huh. cow is sacred. Yes. So you yes, 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 yes. wonder mm -hmm. with the history. Mm -hmm. And um, in Ireland, uh, I'm originally Irish, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the mythology and the old stories have mm -hmm. to do with the cow. Oh. Uh, and um, it is like a symbol of the mother figure. 
mm-hmm. and the uh, the early Irish culture is mm-hmm. to do with the goddess, the female. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yes, Irish culture. Mm-hmm. Yes, interesting. Not very interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> French scientist Leroy Gouron, he wrote many publications about uh, caves with paintings, and he thought that bison is related to female and uh, uh, horse with a man, <laughs> with male. Right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But and now some scientists don't think so. So it's very interesting uh, that such thing about Ireland. I'm interested in your... Uh, it's the first time um, I heard about the cave walls being a passage from passage, one world like, mm-hmm. to another. And um, I suppose in so many cultures in the world, there are big differences. Uh, the Mayan people, mm-hmm. for instance, they bury in the cave. Mm-hmm. So you will find some old pottery and the skull, but no paintings. Mm-hmm. And um, in Australia, some people will say we have many red hand caves Mm -hmm. and uh, the women and the children are usually sitting in the cave waiting for the men to come back with the meat and they they entertain themselves by drawing with the hands it's like a little school Mm -hmm. but uh, who who knows Uh, I suppose the common thing in Africa and Asia, Australia, Europe, Mm -hmm. is people draw what they see, Mm -hmm. the animals that live near them. But I am very intrigued with the symbols. The symbols, Mm -hmm. uh, geometric symbols, can be universal in different parts of the world. In different Mm -hmm. parts of the world, not, but in um, Caves in Europe, they are similar. (laughs) Okay. I have not seen so many European caves other than Lascaux and here. But these, you have seen the symbols here in Altamira and here. Uh, To me, it looks like a a shield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is oblong with lines and it it could be something like a, a boat but what what is your theory on the symbols you see in Europe? We don't know. About it's, symbols mm-hmm. it's very difficult to, to say, say anything. Uh, one t- f- theory is uh, what you said yesterday mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, but symbols uh, it uh, often looks like a vision which a man have before headache, strong headache. Mm. Uh, Migraine, strong headache. I suffer for that. (laughs) For Mm -hmm. Uh, migraine, migraine. It's uh, strong headaches. Mm. And the, you, for you, this symbol represents. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. Before it's similar. Before strong headaches, sometimes people like me, are not no, only no. me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now official uh, science. Science. No, no crazy terror. Okay. It's, it's see, normal. Normal. See, before headaches, see some um, symbols, not symbols. Patterns, patterns, patterns. <laughs> lines. That is circular, it. circular silent, um, circular patterns. Okay. Without ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> Without anything before strong headaches, and oh. uh, with uh, ayahuasca and. Uh, Without ayahuasca, but sometimes with uh, after uh, strong hunger, hallucinogens. Oh yes, yes, yes. but uh, that is connected with uh, the paintings uh, in the caves. It's a, such a theory of scientists from South Africa. 
for one scientist, Louis Williams. <laughs> okay. In Australia and in some African cultures, uh, the interpretation of the circle mm -hmm. is a trap for an animal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. perhaps a mm -hmm. net, mm -hmm. or in the Aboriginal culture, often with the dot painting, it's, I cannot speak for them, but sometimes the circle is a gathering place or a mm -hmm. water hole. Mm -hmm. So you can read the map by looking at mm -hmm. the dots mm -hmm. leading to a circle mm -hmm. and uh, they can be secret places for men or for women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. Can't, can't, can't be, can, can be sacred places. Yes, uh, I bought one painting in Alice Springs and it was painted by a woman and there were seven circles of mm -hmm. different places the women walked to. Um, and it was interesting in this cave to see dots in mm -hmm. red ochre and they continued along mm -hmm. a narrow mm -hmm. passageway mm -hmm. for I'm not good at distance one 100 meters maybe and then there was a second line and was that some way of indicating the direction but direction to nowhere <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it just indicates the wall so you don't knock your head <laughs> and get a, <laughs> an injury. <Okay. laughs> um, yes, I, I find it incredible. Um, what impressed me most about this cave is we were shown on the short tour most of the drawings were using the mentality and the imagination of mm -hmm. the artist to see the contours in mm -hmm. the rock mm -hmm. and how when you have a little marrow lamp and such little light mm -hmm. and some of the bison are in tiny little corners it's uh, it's unbelievable to think people thought of that 20, 18, 20,000 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. years ago. And they painted it with inside the caves in one line. Bison. Perfect bison. One line. <laughs> they From one mm -hmm. touch of hand. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect ability to create just what they wanted. Yeah. Just what they want. Yeah. Yes. And I, you, you hardly ever see a mistake. What do they do with ochre? When you put it on the rock, it is there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they so perfectly mm -hmm. visualize mm -hmm. in the dark what they see outside. Mm -hmm. For me, when I draw an animal, I, I need mm -hmm. a rubber. Mm -hmm. the eraser. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, there was uh, an opinion of that artist who create copy of Lascaux mm -hmm. uh, in such technique like, like pre prehistory and, and, and others. Uh, they said it's impossible to draw, uh, for example, lions without looking at him from without looking at on him close <laughs> from close distance yes and how <laughs> it was possible <laughs> to look so close to lions or another animals <laughs> which was on walls yeah. yes <laughs> it's really <laughs> it's it may look like a simple mm, sketches on walls, no, no, no special. But, but the but face of the bison is not a simple face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very complicated, mm -hmm, the, yeah. con, the contours. And D did you see yesterday? I'm not sure if it was a drawing. It, I think it was shown at the exposition in Paris in 
18 something um, it was the animal licking itself mm -hmm. in Altamira mm -hmm. I was it was very... a little stone yes mm -hmm. it was found in La Madeleine in France yes and how you would think to paint this unusual movement of the animal mm -hmm. with its head reversed licking the mm -hmm. body i it's, remember seeing this and it mm -hmm. had such a, an impression mm -hmm. on me mm -hmm. and even here there were some tiny animal bones and they draw mm -hmm. with scratches mm -hmm. a very minute herd mm -hmm. of animals following mm -hmm. on one tiny bone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a little face it's it's incredible mm -hmm. but i suppose even 18000 years ago not everybody in the community was an artist yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, this was the best <laughs> yeah I cannot help but contrast. Mm -hmm. um, three days ago, I was in the Guggenheim, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most famous galleries in the world. And a lot of the exhibitions there. There was one by Juan Miro, which, well, and then there were lesser artists. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to use your imagination with. Uh, some modern art um, and they were saying Miro was very influenced by early cave art mm -hmm. and when you see some of his symbols you can see that in the cave but here I am three days later looking at art that is this ancient and mm -hmm. it's mind-boggling mm -hmm. to go back to the very beginnings mm -hmm. and to now see what art is mm -hmm. today yes yes, yes. Can I just say, if, yes, any, if anybody is uh -huh. interested in my book, it is available yes. on Amazon and uh, it has stories from Antarctica, uh -huh. uh, the Silk Road, uh, many are in Africa. And of course, it begins in my native Ireland, where I was smuggling butter uh, across the border with Northern Ireland when I was a child. Yeah. Iraq for uh -huh. two, two years. Oh. Uh, my employer was Saddam Hussein. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes. I should have said that. It's a good promo. And oh. uh, this is from Libya, Gaddafi. Uh -huh. And I went to see Poppy the gorilla. You know gorillas in the mist uh -huh. in Rwanda. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. And I did one travel for three months on uh -huh. the Amazon. So this is the Amazon, and this is from the Antarctica, uh -huh. and uh, this is from, uh, I love the artwork in Africa. Mm -hmm. This is in mm -hmm. Ethiopia, the Omo Valley. Mm -hmm. Look at this girl, she's wearing beer bottle tops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> and this girl, and... Um, I am very, and this is a, look at this watch strap. Mm -hmm. It is a goat herder and the things people think of for decorating themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this little girl is from uh, in the Caribbean there are mm -hmm. many descendants from Ireland mm -hmm. she's wearing the Irish colors for St Patrick's Day <laughs> okay and uh, these photos are from Guyana because I was traveling in the jungle and uh -huh. you meet many bird watchers. Mm -hmm. So these are the two famous birds uh, in that area. And mm -hmm. I love sloths. Mm -hmm. That is me when I was younger okay. with a baby sloth in Guyana. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it was so wonderful to meet uh, <laughs> Jakub and Justina and have the experience today and good luck with your podcasts and your YouTube channel. So, so thank you and <laughs> till the next time. Bye bye. bye. Goodbye from El Castillo. <laughs>